An on-track incident boils over between Bubba Wallace and Kyle Larson at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We will talk about that, plus some information we might need to know going into 2023 for three teams, Stewart House Racing, 2311 Racing, and Hendrick Motorsports. Let's talk. <music> This episode of Above the Yellow Line is presented by Shaq Eye Gear. Hey race fans, it's Taylor and welcome back to Above the Yellow Line, the show where we talk all about the NASCAR Cup Series. We had some history made at Las Vegas Motor Speedway this weekend in the Xfinity Series. First off, congrats to Josh Berry for winning that race, locking himself into the championship four for the Xfinity Series Championship, as well as congrats to Junior Motorsports for their 1-2-3 finish. But Haley Deegan made her Xfinity Series debut this weekend and she made an incredible stat. Joseph Strigley shared this with all of us. She has the best debut by a female in the Xfinity Series in the second best debut by a female in any NASCAR National Series of all time, finishing in the 13th position. So congrats to Haley Deegan. She was also the best finishing Ford of the day, which was also impressive. So I'm excited to see where her future lies. This also for me is a testament to the Truck Series might not be the best stepping stone for a driver going from ARCA to Truck to Xfinity, then to Cup. It feels kind of out there, it always has, but I think for me that shows that the Xfinity Series might do a better job at developing a driver then the Cup Series. Of course, I know this was her first race. There's not a lot of history to back that up on, but I am impressed by what I saw, and I hope to see her in the Xfinity Series at more in the future, so congrats to her on that great finish at Vegas. On a second note, before we get into our results, we have some sad news to talk about. Kurt Busch this weekend at Vegas announced that he is going to be retiring from full-time competition in 2023. He is still not cleared by doctors. I made a YouTube short on this, kind of going over all the responses from all parties involved. Another party involved in this is Tyler Reddick, who announced that he will be moving to 2311 Racing a year earlier than expected. RCR did release him from his contract as rumored last week. So if you want to learn more about that instance, make sure you check out the YouTube short after this video. But major thank you to Kurt Busch for all that he has done for the sport in his full-time career. This is not it for him, though. He is still going to be sticking around, and he hopes to do some races when he is cleared. He is just done from full-time competition. He did also want to reach out to Fox to see if he could be in the broadcast booth in some capacity. I would like to see him in there full-time for Fox. I think he adds an extra oomph to the broadcast, especially when it comes to the truck series, which is where he's mainly did the, done the broadcast for. So, Hoping for the best for Kurt in his recovery. We are excited to see what capacity he comes back in when he is ready to next year. Now for our results of the South Point 400. This guy had one of the strongest cars all day. He had to battle back from some issues. Nevertheless, Joey Logano was your guy to get it done. He is your Shaq Eye Gear MVP of the day because he locked himself into the championship for a really solid job by Joey Logano. He did this with a gutsy tire call coming off of one of the cautions near the end of the race. He was able to make his way back through the field and obviously get the win. So congrats to that 22 team on winning their way into the championship four. He will be racing for the championship at Phoenix. Then in second place, we have Ross Chastain, who fought him valiantly. A clean fight between Joey Logano and Ross Chastain, which I love to see. I was expecting some chaos there, but I am... Super thrilled that it was a clean race to the finish because this was a good race. We'll talk about that more when we go to our race rating. Third place, we have Kyle Busch. This is his second top three in a row. And he came back from a spin in the race. He's had a lot of single car spins this season, so very impressive. The last race we went to at the Roval, he finished in the third position, so very good for Kyle Busch. In fourth place, Chase Briscoe. He is my honorable mention for the MVP because he started the race not good at all. Started like well back in the 20th positions, then was able to plow his way to the front. I thought at one point he was going to actually win this race. I don't know what they did to the car, but they made the car much better for Chase Briscoe and gave him a better shot at advancing into the round of four of the championship four, which is crazy to say. We looked at his stats a little bit on the live stream last Friday. We talked about his chances. I don't think they're that great, but given the performance and the fight back that we saw from him and this team at Vegas, he might be a shocker going into the championship four. I'm not really sure, but a really solid job by that 14 team getting themselves back in the championship fight. We will look at the points later. He is still below the line, but he gave himself a better chance, as I said, than he did coming into this race. Then in fifth, we have Denny Hamlin, sixth, Tyler Reddick, seventh, Truex, 8th Jones, 9th Almendinger, and 10th Austin Dillon. A really interesting top 10 mix. Then I want to look at the rest of the playoff contenders and some guys that are out of the playoffs. 
First up in the 11th position, we have Noah Gregson, who is filling in for Alex Bowman. So really good to see him do well in that Hendrick equipment. Of course, though, we know that Alex Bowman last week announced that he will be missing the next three races. One of those races was last weekend at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So we have two left for Alex Bowman to sit out until he hopefully returns at Phoenix. Obviously, if we have any updates, we'll have those for you on tobychristie.com. But he is planning to race at Phoenix if all goes well and if he is cleared. And also, more news coming out of the 48 team is that they have a new crew chief for next year. We know that Grey Guys is stepping down from the crew chief role to join Hendrick Motorsports in another capacity. Filling in for him will be Blake Harris. For me, this is a solid selection from Hendrick Motorsports as a crew chief option. Blake Harris, obviously, right now, part of a really solid year for Michael McDowell, the most top 10s he's ever had in his career, in his crew chiefing debut. This is the first time that he has done crew chiefing at this level. It is very impressive. He used to work with Furniture Row Racing, went to Joe Gibbs Racing. Now, of course, he's with Front Row Motorsports. So a really solid pick. Hendrick Motorsports has a knack for picking up really good talent. I would say the same thing for Junior Motorsports as well. Obviously, at a top-tier team, you want to have the best of the best, and I think that they got that in Blake Harris, so I'm excited to see how him and Alex Bowman work together in 2023. Obviously, though, I'm going to miss that chemistry between Bowman and Greg Ives. I think they had something special going on there, but obviously with Greg Ives the best as he goes into the next chapter of his career, and I'm really excited to see what Blake Harris can do with that 48 team. Moving on to the 12th position with Kevin Harvick. Some news here that dropped during the race day. Gene Haas was actually at the track and he said that he would like Cole Custer to return to the 41 car in 2023. However, Tony Stewart said that he wants Ryan Priest to take over that ride in 2023. So we have combating issues right here. There was also rumors that Gene Haas wants Kevin Harvick to stay in the car past 2023. They want to reach an agreement to where they can extend his contract. However, Kevin Harvick said that he is pretty sure he is done following 2023. If you remember from the Dale Jr. download, I think last year, like around December or whenever that episode came out with Kevin Harvick, he made it pretty clear that he's probably wanting to be done after the 2023 season, but maybe they'll extend it. We saw that Al Marola was pretty set on being done this year, and then he has a multi-year extension, which is wild to me that someone can change their mind from wanting to be completely done with things to multi-year. That's okay, though. So we'll see what happens with this. Like I said, a very interesting development here, not knowing Cole Custer's future going into 2023. For me, he might be the last silly season domino to fall in the Cup Series, but we'll have to see. Going back to our playoff competitors in the 13th position is William Byron. 21st was Elliott. He seems to just miss the mark in the first races of these rounds. So finishing in that 21st position really did not get better than that all day long. Then in the 28th position, we had Ryan Blaney, who was in a position to win the race all day long. Unfortunately, though, after a caution with JJ Yaley, he had a rough restart. William Byron almost got into him. That called him to check up, move back. He was able to battle back to the third position, and then he had what I believe was a tire issue. It was the same issue that we saw Austin Sidrick had where he got loose, got into the wall. This really ruined Blaney's day, who I thought actually was going to win. So more bad luck for Ryan Blaney. was not able to close it out. He did win a stage, though, but very unfortunate for Blaney. He is now below the cutoff line. Like I said, we will talk about the points later, but he's going to have to have some flawless races coming up to ensure that he is in the championship four. Then the big story of the day, in the 34th position, we had Christopher Bell, who was taken out of this race with an on-track incident between Bubba Wallace and Kyle Larson. There's a lot to talk about here, so let's break it down. First thing is first, what happened? What led to the incident on track between Wallace and Larson? Well, they were going three wide for position. Kevin Harvick was in that mix. He decided to check up. He said, no thanks. And then Kyle Larson ended up appearing to get loose. We've seen him run guys up the track before during this season, especially, but I feel like this was actually an instance of him making a mistake, getting loose, ran Bubba Wallace into the wall. Wallace did not like that at all. Ran Larson down the track and then hooked him in the right rear corner panel, sending them both spinning. As this happened, Larson actually almost hit the rear of his car into the wall. Some of the instances that we've seen with that crash has led to concussion-like symptoms. Unfortunately and fortunately, Bell was there to take part of that blow. It took him out of the race. Wallace then spun. Then we saw an instance where the cars went totally still. Wallace got out of his car, walked across the track in a yellow flag condition, walked up to Kyle Larson, threw some shoves, and then he was escorted away. Yeah, so we got we got a few things to talk about here. Let's start with talking about Bubba Wallace's response in his post-race interview. Summarizing the arguments here, Bubba Wallace did not admit intent in his post-race interviews. He said it was a steering issue. It was a poor executed move on Larson's part to try to get position. That's what he saw in his eyes. So all in all, angry at the situation, did not specifically admit intent, but was pretty frustrated with the situation. 
From Kyle Larson's perspective, he did not appreciate the retaliation type that Wallace chose, hooking him in his right rear quarter panel. He said just with the safety of these cars and what we've seen, he would have much rather had Wallace probably punch him, shove him, than what we saw in the cars on the track. He said that we've all let the emotions get the best of us. Larson has two just would have preferred it some different way. He said that Wallace did have a right to be mad at him, though, for the actions on the track and expected some sort of retaliation. So that's the summary of the events. Here are my overall thoughts on this. We have seen guys retaliate on track before. We've seen guys spin each other out under caution, under green. We've seen really scary wrecks that happened as a result of this. I'm never a true fan of retaliation. I know some of you are all there for the drama. I personally am not, especially this season, because we have seen how dangerous these cars can be. For this specific instance, I am not a fan of any of it at all. There's some disobeying of NASCAR officials and the safety team, hooking somebody in the right rear. And if Bell wasn't there, Larson, like I said earlier, would have probably hit his car in the rear, could have caused a concussion. Obviously, we are jumping to conclusions here as what could have happened, and I don't mean to do that, but there could have been more serious consequences for the actions of Bubba Wallace on track. So I am not a huge fan of this, quite frankly, at all. What I'm really not a fan of, though, is what happened when the car settled. We had a minute to process this, think about our next actions, Wallace, as he was walking across the track under yellow flag conditions, and then continued to shove Kyle Larson, and they had a disagreement in the grass area. I, I'm just, I'm not a fan of that either. You had time to kind of cool down a little bit and think through your next steps. If you wanted to say that this wasn't intentional, I think that next step where he got out of his car and met Larson to talk about the instance, I should say, should not have happened. So I think it's going to be really hard for Wallace to argue that this was not intentional, given what we saw after the cars settled down. I would expect some disciplinary action here. I want to draw our attention to an earlier instance this season. I'm not talking about Hamlin versus Byron. I think comparing this situation between Larson and Wallace to Hamlin and Byron is not a fair comparison at all. They're both fruits. I made this comment in our group chat for ATYL. They're both fruits. They're both instances of retaliation, but we are talking apples and oranges of what happened in the cars when this instance happened and what happened after those on-track incidents happened. So I think it's not fair to compare those situations with a horrible analogy, but I do want to compare it to an instance that we saw in the Xfinity series at Red America between Noah Gregson and Sage Karam. Gregson clearly retaliated intentionally against Sage hooked him and then caused a multi-car wreck under the bridge on a straightaway. Really not safe at all. Gregson was not suspended for this instance. Again, I know I'm comparing similar situations that aren't totally alike, obviously. Like I keep mentioning, there is a secondary component to the Wallace and Larson thing with Wallace getting out of his car and approaching Larson starting to fight. So if we are comparing the on-track in-car incident between Sage Karam and Noah Gregson to what we saw between Larson and Wallace, that not resulting in a suspension, I don't think that we're going to see Wallace get a suspension for that alone. The aftermath of that, though, might result in a suspension for Bubba Wallace, but NASCAR said that they are going to be reviewing this this week and making a decision as to what penalty will ensue. If anything, I'm expecting a hefty monetary penalty and a points penalty for Bubba Wallace, but not a suspension in my eyes, but let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, now let's get to the ATYL point standings and driver's point standings following the race at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. I know that was a chunk of the show to talk about the Larson and Wallace instance, but it had to be talked about. Again, when we get updates on that, we will let you know at tobychristy.com. But for now, here are how the points worked. I'm pretty happy after this weekend. I had Joey Logano as my winner, so I got the most points this weekend. I've now caught up a little bit to Dom Joseph. I have 83 points. He still leads, though, with 87. Right behind us is Adam with 78, then Brandon with 76, and then Rob with 72 points. Looking at our playoff grid, Joey Logano has locked himself into the championship four, so one of four spots are taken away. Following him is Chastain in second in points, Elliott third, and Hamlin fourth. Chastain and Elliott have a pretty good lead, plus 18 and plus 17 to the good. Then there is a gap between them and Hamlin. Hamlin is plus six to the good. This means those below the cutoff line are minus six, minus nine, minus 11, and minus 23 in order. Byron, Briscoe, Blaney, and Bell, all of the B last names are below that cutoff line right now. Finally, let's close it out with their race rating above or below the yellow line. As always, I love to look at your responses to this race on social media. So let's take a look at what you thought of the South Point 400 on a Twitter poll first. Roughly 33% of you said this was a great race. 42% of you said this was good. 18% said okay. And 6% said bad. On YouTube, the poll is still going. But as of right now, 31% of you said this was a great race. 30% said good. 25% said okay, and 14% said bad. 
So those were your thoughts by the numbers. We're going to go to my thoughts, giving this an official rating above or below the yellow line. Drama aside, this was a fantastic Vegas race, one of my favorites that we've had in a while. I think we had... 18 lead changes amongst 11 different drivers, which was very impressive. A lot of movement through the mid-pack, which I greatly appreciate. This Gen 7 car has saved mile and a half racing, so thank you to NASCAR for that. Obviously, still some work to do on the short tracks and the road courses, but nevertheless, mile and a half have been saved in my eyes. I also greatly appreciated the clean finish that we saw at the end. It wasn't a three-lap shootout. It was just a clean race between two great competitors. Logano and Chastain. Nobody tried to race anybody ugly, which I greatly appreciate, and it made for an amazing finish to this race when Logano was able to overtake Chastain to get the win. I would have been happy if either of them won, to be honest with you, but I I'm, I'm still very glad that it was a clean race to the end. Very exciting to watch from TV. I'm sure it was exciting to watch in person as well, but because of all these things I've said about this race, it's definitely above the yellow line. I'm going to give it an 85% for being a fantastic race at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So what did you think about the South Point 400, the Wallace and Larson incident? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we are done with this episode of Above the Yellow Line, the show where we talk all about the NASCAR Cup Series. A reminder, we are halfway through the month of October. This is Dysautonomia Awareness Month. If you don't know what that word means, make sure to watch my video on the illness spreading awareness for that for the month of October. The video is linked in the description below. It gives you ways on how to educate yourself on the illness and what you can do to help spread awareness with me. So make sure to check that out. Also make sure to check out our social media pages. We are on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at underscore Taylor Kitchen underscore on Twitter and above the yellow line on Instagram and YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. TobyChristy.com is also on all social media platforms, so make sure to follow TobyChristy.com on all those locations. Last but not least, I want to give a major thank you to Shaq Eyegear for supporting ATYL and TobyChristy.com. This weekend, I am definitely going to be using the promo code MAMA34 to get 20% off my order of Shaq Eyegear glasses. You are welcome to do the same, so make sure to use that promo code when you order at ShaqEyegear.com. You can find all of our social pages linked in the description below, but before you check that out, as always, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this with your friends and family, and guys, thank you so much for supporting us here at Above the Yellow Line and TobyChristy.com, and until next time, I'll see ya.